Hi there! I know I haven't made a video in a little while, I've just been going through some major purging and whenever I purge I'm really in my head, I'm in my ego and I'm not guided to make any videos. So I always reappear when my vibration is a little bit higher and uh, I have time as well to make videos. So I've been through some major, major stuff that's taken me right to my core. But as I've gotten further on the journey, one thing I do notice is I notice that I recover a lot quicker. I can, but it goes kind of deeper. It's like the pain is almost unbearable, but then 12 hours later you're jumping around and you're super high because you've purged off another layer. So um, I have my own little ideas on the twin flame journey as we go along. I mean, these videos, they're all for everybody, so you know anyone can get stuff out of them. I tend to predominantly do stuff around twin flame journey and soul connections. A lot of people want to know who their twin flame is. And is this my twin flame? Who's my twin flame? I want to meet my twin flame. Well, you sh you I personally feel there is no way to know. People are like, oh, but I'm 100%. I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm positive. But I've seen a lot of people be in that space where they have no doubt whatsoever. And then they meet somebody else. And they're like, oh, now I've got another twin. So this is my belief on the subject, is that there is no way to tell who your twin flame is until you are close-ish to um, a vibration of pure unconditional love. Because while you're still being pulled around by your wounds and your templates to a certain, to such a high level, and, and you meet a very strong connection, there will be, it's like you have to be very close to the core of your own being to be able to recognise yourself, and, you know. So I feel that it's all about unearthing and, and shedding off and shelling all this templates and wounds and things that pull you to people before you get close and your twin will be the person that you completely unconditionally love and it will be when you completely and unconditionally love yourself. So you have to be close to that to know. Until then you can think you know you can be 100% sure you know, you can be doubtful, it doesn't matter. But you have to be close to the core of your own being to be able to recognise yourself in another. And to be able to recognise somebody from pure love, not from a place of wounds and templates. So this is my, my personal belief anyway. So you might feel somebody is, but they might be very heavily connected to your templates and your wounding. And that's fine. It, in essence, doesn't matter because whoever you're connected to is taking you on the journey. You'll know if you're on that journey, on the twin flame journey, which is a journey of self. And these people are showing you the connection you have to yourself and how you treat yourself. So it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, we can forget the labels because it's about using the connections that you have to help you purge off things that are not serving you and to readdress the way that you see and value and respect and treat yourself. So anyone you have a very strong connection to that feels like they could be a twin, well, just treat them as one. Treat them as a connection to yourself and I guarantee that once you've learned the lesson that you need to, if they're not, they will drift on by and another very strong connection will come in. And if not, they will grow all the way to the core with you. So. You will start to know when you're very, very close, this is my, my opinion, to your core vibration, to your core frequency of unconditional love. Once you've purged, I don't know what the figure is, but let's say you've purged a certain amount that you're actually able to recognise love rather than being pulled this way and pulled this way by, um, by your wounds. Um, so this first video I wanted to make was on how do we self-focus, like all these videos on twin self-focus, you know, you need to self-focus, it's very true, when you focus on someone else, they focus on themselves, when you focus on yourself, they focus on you. Um, so how do we self-focus? Well, I'd like to put it out there that I don't believe we can. We can sure get on with our own stuff, we can go for a facial, go for a massage, do a hobby, go to the gym, do some sport. And that kind of stuff is quite easy. Um, 
but to not have that constant feeling and that co constant connection and that constant yearning, that's something totally different. Somebody just telling you not to feel it anymore, well, that's impossible. And I used to do that. I used to, in my coaching, I'd be like, you need to self-focus. And I didn't really think into it too much because I for I'd forgotten how bad it was when I started the journey that you can't just switch it off and go and focus on yourself for a day or half a day. Impossible. So how do we self-focus? Because that's what it is, you self-focus and you're moving closer to union, but how do you do it? Well, I'd like to put it out there that if you can't self-focus, it's because something needs to be addressed or healed and the connection is showing it to you. The reason the connection is there is for a reason. It's there to show you unhealed parts of yourself or parts you haven't accepted of yourself or parts or how you don't value yourself. So if the connection is present and it's pulling at you, it's because your wounds are needing to be placated. So you need to get some, basically some help. Don't mean that in a derogatory way. I've gone through coaching, still would do coaching, um, and it is very much a lifelong practice. It's telling you there's something inside of yourself that you need to fix. And until you fix it, you're going to live with it. Sure, you can pretend to self-focus and kind of half self-focus whilst living with the pull for lots of years, 20, 30, whatever. But it's telling you that there's something there that needs to be addressed. And if you have the pull and you need to self-focus, it's because you need to learn something from that connection, from that pull. And when you do it will naturally dissolve and you'll be able to self-focus. I notice that the more I go down this journey, the more I'm able to self-focus, but not because I'm trying to self-focus, I just naturally self-focus because I'm not being, I'm dissolving the ways that I'm looking outside of myself by healing the patterns and the templates. So I'm no longer being pulled to look outside of myself and I'm able to just sit and be. I don't do, a you know, I'm not saying that I'm there 24-7 because I am not, but I am having good lengthy periods now where I am completely self-focused, which is a vast improvement to when the journey first started, when I probably had one minute max <laughs> of self-focus. By self-focus, I'm meaning literally self-focus. I'm not meaning getting on with a task while thinking about something. I'm talking 100% involved in the moment, and I really, really don't believe that you can just tell someone to go and be that. I truly do believe that this is about, you're not gonna get rid of that pull and be able to self-focus till you address what it's trying to tell you. So if you wanna be able to self-focus, then go and get some coaching, some counseling, reading the right manuals, healing, whatever it is that you're guided to. I'm not saying come and do my coaching, that's not what this video is about, but it's about going and finding somebody you resonate to take you through your patterns and your templates and your childhood stuff and then maybe some spiritual stuff to help with the ancestral patterns and the really unconscious patterns and it really is a dedication and a life journey and it's not something you can go and have a quick fix about and just go and buy a, a potion and then the next day you're healed you know this is a life practice and it does involve investment as well you know, I can't tell you how much I've invested in my journey and how much I've invested in um, self-growth and healing myself. And it's been money well spent. You know, the money that's not well spent is the psychics and they're trying to work out what some, why somebody else isn't responding when you're feeling this connection and it's driving you crazy. That stuff, you know, have the odd one, you know, just to find out what the dynamics of your connection are. But don't go around trying to find out what other people are thinking and wasting money on that. If you've got that connection, it doesn't matter what they're thinking. That's the truth. It doesn't matter whether they feel it or not feel it. Because if you've got a connection to somebody that you can't get rid of, it's because you are lacking something in your connection to self. And you need to sort that out. And you need to sort it out in whatever way you're guided to. But that is probably the best way you can spend any money you have is on finding somebody to coach you through your templates and to help heal you through your ancestral patterns, templates and, pa and patterns. 
so you can connect to yourself again. And that's when you self-focus. The more you start to connect to yourself and heal, the more you'll begin to naturally self-focus. So I hope that helped. I've got a few more to come yet as well.